We're on. Welcome back. Hey, welcome back to you guys. We're recording this this time. We are. On multiple devices. <laughs> <laughs> we've got a phone, we've got a phone, we've got a phone. Got a phone, boys. So, um, today, what are we talking about, Lee? The power of positive thinking. Right. I'm becoming Eckhart Tolle up in. So, <laughs> I don't know if we can swear on YouTube. I'm not going to bleep that. Oh, can't we? No, uh, I won't advertise it. I can make no money. Oh, no, no, just bleep the swearing and I'll stop swearing. Fair enough. Hey, uh, so Lane sent me a really cool article last night, which was. Um, how belief can make you achieve more, essentially. What, is that what it was? How belief can make you run faster and lift more. Instagram post by Luke Tullick breaking down a really cool study. Um, but yeah, essentially it, it goes into um, a 2017... I'm reading this, by the way. 2017 study used a, dream, a green drink to improve sprint times in test subjects. Um, and each group was given a belief about the green drink before they were tested. So... Uh, one group of people was told the drink has no impact. Another group said the drink has a positive impact. And the third group said the drink may or may not have a positive effect. Um, then all the groups completed a 200 meter sprint. The drink, the, the subjects that were told outright the drink has a positive effect saw a 2.41 second improvement in the 200 meter sprint time, which is insane. Yeah, that's a massive. Um, and so I guess the the... To summarize it and what we took away from it, and we're going to dive a little bit deeper into that, is watch the power of positive thinking, uh, even if it is a placebo effect, as we saw demonstrated in that study, can can do for your ability to lift, run, study, work. Get benefit out of almost anything. And I think one of the, one of the key takeaways from this and something I saw from that was people who take BCAAs, branch chain amino acids, while training, they're like, I train better with them. Mm-hmm. And maybe they do, mm. because their mind goes, well, this is the thing that helps you. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Placebos are really squirrely hole to run down. If, and, and, and essentially, placebo effect is if you believe something will have a positive effect, it likely will. And it has a dark side called the nocebo effect. And that means if you believe something's going to have a negative result, it probably will. And that's a, that's a phenomenon that's been studied time and time again. I guess the only problem with BCAAs is if... The individual believes it, sure, but it's when you go telling people, yeah, everyone else yeah. will. And that's I guess the same thing with the, the green drink. Sure, it's don't yeah. go and market the green yeah, drink. Yeah, yeah, because the green right. drink will do things. You know it doesn't, but it did for these people. Yeah, it's an interesting one. I'm huge into the power of positivity. Mm-hmm. As anyone that's followed me on any social media knows, I'm an avid forcer of positivity and energy out there. But I think it's because I personally have seen the the benefits that have come from that, and I am someone that's kind of like, oh, I'm just gonna do it. Yep. And then I do it because of that. And I think it's because I've willed myself to do it. Sure. What are your thoughts on that? Where, where do you think that the mind comes in? Because you're quite a... Cynic is not the word I want. Maybe realist? Skeptic. I Skeptic is the, definitely the word I wanted. Yeah. So you're more likely to be like, eh, I don't know about that. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a funny one. Um, I, think, I think you've got to cross the bridge of what positivity means to you as well. Like your your brand of positivity is very authentic from you, and it's very smiley and happy and the traditional idea of positivity. Whereas positivity for anyone, what you're saying is not a cliche. No, no, not at all. But some people's version of positivity may just be not being negative. Yeah, not yeah. having a negative affect. So remember that. That's about where I'm at. I struggle with that. I have tend to have a very negative affect and that gets in the way um but actually last week i was on this long residential school for uni and what kept coming up across clinical psychology counseling health psychology the works was that you've got to have the right tools in place to execute your plan yeah right you train properly and you eat right that's that's part of the equation too but across this whole spectrum it was that your belief in self-mastery and your belief your self-confidence in what you're doing is by far the biggest indicator of success. Yeah. Oh, I did it again. It's okay. That's we, insane. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> but I think you are right. I think that's where it comes down to... It's like this particular situation with COVID right now, and I saw a great thing from... It was a celebrity. I can't remember what she's from. She's in Pitch Perfect. I don't know her name. It'll come to me. Anyway, her, she's very good on Twitter. Her thing, she's like, if there's one thing that COVID's really t- told me, it's... I will not do all the things I said if I do, if I had more time. <laughs> and it's right, because all these people will be like, man, if only I had a month to focus and just focus on that one thing, people had a month now, and they're not doing it. Mm-hmm. Some people maybe are. 
but that's where you show the people that maybe need to be given a little bit more than just time to do something is because it's not in them to work in that way and so that's where either having a program to stick to or does it um because having just the option doesn't isn't enough for them yeah whereas for me i'm the opposite of that i'm like oh great yeah i can do that thing now i'm gonna actually do it you know, i haven't lost gains in this period because i'm like great we can train still i can change up the way i train yeah no definitely and and, and that's a that's kind of blending positivity and excuses. You you refuse to make excuses for for those kind of things. And yeah, the, the belief that you can go out and do the thing in the face of adversity is such a big step. And how that message is presented to people inspires different reactions in people. Like you've got David Goggins and Jocko and guys who come out of the military who are just like, everything's going to crap good. Yeah, chance, now I, now chance to get better. And some people invest in that and they're like, you know what? Yes, that's how that message resonates with me. And then you've got all the way down the other end of the spectrum whose version of positivity is um, people like, there's a lot of psychologists like this and a lot of public academics who are very nurturing and working with people to get them to be more positive. That whole spectrum is great. Yeah, yeah. You, there's no one thing that's the right way of doing it. No, you've just got to find where you sit on that spectrum. Um, I saw a great thing. Maybe you sent it to me or maybe Ross just posted it. I can't remember. It was be naive enough to start and yeah, stubborn yeah. enough stubborn to, to finish. Yeah, yeah and, and, and that's the thing. That stubbornness is a version of positivity. That stoicism, although it can seem like, oh, it's just, it can seem a bit masochistic. Which it is a little bit. It is a little yeah. bit, but that's the version of positivity that gets Ross to the edge. And that's exactly it's within him to do that. And we've talked about this before. People like Pat, mm. who we've got uh, Andrew Papadopoulos, a friend of ours, who does these like huge runs over mountains. Like he's not built as a runner. Mm -mm. He's not he's, built as that he's guy. He's a big boy. <laughs> but that's what his thing is. He has the ability to to drip down, and that's where he finds his motivation is doing the thing that you probably shouldn't be able to do. He likes being that guy. You and I don't want to do that. Mm -mm. But you do that in a different way. Because, like, write down, write down a week of training when you're at, like, the, in the depths of it, like, especially a bulk. Or, mm -hmm. a, like, when you're in the... Or training for Ninja Warrior, right? That's a prime example. If you wrote that down and showed it, even to hardcore endurance people, they'd probably look at it and just be like, I don't want to do that. Yeah. I think you still operate on that end just... Be, we just, just within our own way. Exactly. And we look at the endurance guys because... Everybody looks at endurance guys, like, even if you don't train at home and you're watching this, it's probably unlikely if you're watching this on YouTube, but if, say you didn't, you look at an endurance guy and you know 400 kilometers or a 100 mile ultra, you know that's a long way. You, yes. Everybody's traveled 100 miles in their life in some way. You look at someone who bench presses 45 sets a week at triple body weight, whatever. Yeah. You're like, oh, is that good? Yeah, and I guess that, that is it. It's your understanding and your comprehension of the task that makes it mm. that thing. You and I are particularly different in workload mm -hmm. in that way. On my workload is significantly higher than most people, but I don't see it that way because that's where I find joy. So maybe... Exactly. Where do you think you excel? I have an answer for you, but I want you to answer <laughs> oh, for you. <laughs> Jeez. I, I mean, I don't know. Um, I like I like to be challenged. I like problem solving. That's where I think I excel the most. Because I, I, once, once a problem catches my eye, especially intellectual or academic problems, I don't want to stop till I've got it figured out. Yeah. Personally. I would just say your... your workload your that thing where you do more than most people do would come into the academic side of things the the intellectual the problem solving for clients you find your purpose your productivity comes from helping and being there and doing that thing longer than most people would do it it's just whether you i didn't know if you'd realize that yourself yeah. as much because it is it's problem solving but i think you also solve other people's problems as much with that rather than being a just self-fulfillment thing yeah i think and i think that's coming from like a family of teachers my wife is a teacher my mother-in-law is a teacher and i i don't know i think it was just ingrained for me from a young age to if you know something help others with it yeah i think i just realized how surrounded by teachers we are oh dude both it's my parents both yes. your parents yeah molly molly yeah like it's lee it's just what there's too many teachers in our lives but you got mad yet we refuse to learn mad, mad respect <laughs> to teachers you guys are holding it down at the moment I, I want to continue on to the, the placebo effect 
Yep, type of thing, because there's an interesting study in this, and I am the exact... I'm the, the rat here. You're I'm the lab rat. You're a rat. Do you remember... I don't remember what the name of the brand was. They had a, a product that was essentially EAAs, that was like... <laughs> Cyborg. Cyborg Sports. <laughs> they had this product that a friend of ours worked at a supplement store and was like, oh, this one, this is what you want here. If you don't... Because I'm not... And I've never been a big, like, drink my shake three times a day. That's what grenades amazing because I can actually have those pre-made shakes because I don't like blending things. I'm yeah. lazy. And um, they're tasty, isn't they it? They are tasty. Yeah. But the EAAs, this, this thing with their product was, it was like fruity flavoured stuff and you have so it while good. you train and it's going to give you all the same benefits of having a whey protein. It wasn't marketed as an EAA. It was marketed as a some sort of protein replacement. I right. don't remember what it was I marketed neither. as. No, neither but it came out later on. The company got sued. I'm not sure if they got sued, but it definitely came out that it was underdosed. It was just like, it wasn't what it said it was in the label. But during the period of taking it, 100% would have told you it worked. I was like, yeah, this thing's the best. Same. I have it every time I train. Yeah. And, it, and I think it was that my training was on point. My diet was still on point, And I just haven't used using this thing that I probably didn't, it wasn't taking away from anything, but it wasn't really adding anything. But I would have told you 100%. Yeah, if I don't have it, I'm not going to train as well. Exactly right. And that, that is, that's textbook placebo. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and I guess it's about capturing that that green drink, if you will, from this green the study, and developing your own mental green drink. What's gonna What's gonna really key you into whatever it is you're doing? Yeah, um, I, I'm reading this book at the moment. I can't even remember what the title is. <laughs> well, other book anyway. Where the guy the guy has two things. He, so two things he says to himself. The first one is hope is not a strategy. And I love that. Yeah. And the second one is how you do anything is how you do everything. Yeah, that's a good one too. Yeah. And so hope is not a strategy. Apply that to life by just having a little bit of a plan. Yeah. Have a meticulous plan if you want to. We're not meticulous planners. We, we make plans, but we kind of go by the fly. Um, but how you do anything is how you do everything is really important i think especially to remember around training and nutrition and mindset towards life yeah nail everything at 100 percent. and I, I don't do this don't get me wrong that's a good way but it's definitely sense. something i'm trying to remind myself of every day now i think that's an interesting one when it comes to clients who particularly people who reach out to the first time being like i want to achieve this will your program get me there we have the tools to help get you there, but in the end, it comes down to you. And this is something that I regularly will tell people that sign up being like, how long have you been training for? And I tell them, I've been training, like focused training for five years now to get where I'm at. And they're like, so I can do it five years? Probably not, to be honest. If I'm being completely honest, five years is probably not enough for most people to go from scratch to that because I was already in the mindset of being like, well, I'm, that's what I want to do. I'm going to get there. And I was already willing to work. I just didn't have the tools in place to do it. Mm. So... Once I got the tools in place, I was already in that point. Whereas most people, the opposite way around. Totally. They've got the tools offered to them. They just don't know how to put it in place. Yeah. And I, I guess that like, and just using you as an example, because I've known you for such a long time. Let's even, even take genetics out of it. Take genetic, your genetic response for one and your genetic ability to work hard. Let's remove both of those things. Soccer at three. Taekwondo, gymnastics. Like people also haven't done that. That's why don't come to people and say, well, can I do that in, yeah. in your time? Well, do you have the biopsychosocial background that I have? Of course you don't, but don't think about that. Because yeah, that's that's exactly the next point. It doesn't matter if you can't do what I've done. Do the best version of you in that stage because, and again, people are like, I want to be like you when I grow up. Be yourself. You're going to be much better at that. If you focus on bringing out your best genetic potential, you're going to create something that's far more impressive than trying to replicate something that someone else has done. Exactly. And, and remove, take away... The five-year thing is insanely quick. I'm not trying to take away from that. And, and if you can do that in five years, great. But don't limit yourself to that either. Think about the flip side. What if you could do it in three? Yeah, probably not. But what if you could? What if your version of your genetics and your execution and the tools that you have in your toolbox get you there in three years? Don't limit yourself to fives. I think people would also like, mine's five years and that, that it's it. that's, that's a really good result. And I put on, what, 15 kilos probably in that five years. That's impressive, but also when you consider that's something, if I had have done what I've done for in the last 12 months alone, earlier, I would have had much more success. I think Definitely. that's, people have the ability there, and I think that's when people come looking for mentors and stuff. If you've got someone that's done it and goes, I'm going to teach you from my mistakes, mm. that's the person you want to get from. It's not like, this is how I got this 
and you can do it the exact way I've done it. Yeah. Do it better than I did it. Exactly right. That's how we keep progressing. Yeah, for sure. I don't know that's very off topic from where we're going there. No, that's 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 all good. That's what happens in our podcast. Yeah. Let's get back, let's check it back to positivity. Outside of training and nutrition, what are some places in your life that positivity has had a positive impact? <laughs> yes. Sorry yeah. about that one. I just yeah. didn't. I lost my words. Um, where, well, do you, where do you apply it? Where else do you apply it? Everything. Right. Everything for me comes from the attitude. And yeah. this is something that I, I've said before, probably on this podcast, but I've definitely said on others, that growing up, uh, my dad and mom instilled in me a saying that I hated as a kid because it was just like, attitude is everything. And my dad's like, I'm going to get you a hat that says attitude is everything. I'm like, oh, it's so lame. I don't want that. And the older I've got, the more I realize how relevant that is. Sure. Your attitude, you go in towards things. If you go into it being like, I'm going to have fun. I'm going to make the most of this. I'm going to be productive and do this. You're genuinely going to have fun, be productive and make the most of it. If you go into a thing being like, oh, got to do this thing, you're going to get through it, but you're probably going to not enjoy the experience as much. So generally everything I do now, I go into it with, what some would see, see as a fake amount of enthusiasm and over the top, but I always have a good time because of that. Mm. I'm never let down by my own energy, sure. my own attitude towards things. And I think I would love to instill that on more people. As in, choose your energy. Choose your attitude towards things because it truly does make everything a more pleasant experience. What would your advice be to people who want to get to that end goal and haven't started any positive mindset Tra- not training, but you know what I mean? They, they haven't started putting their positivity on anything. Yeah. They think if they bring the same attitude that you bring to the party, they are going to be fake. How do they start? Fake it. Sure. Fake it till you make it. Okay. Uh, say yes to more things. Mm-hmm. I said that on our friends, they did the, the Bridges Gap podcast, and that was an accidental thing. I was talking about Yes Man, the movie with Jim Carrey, because <laughs> I just recently watched that. But that movie for me is such a... I love that movie because Jim Carrey is the best. But... The overall arching theme of that is just like say yes to life, say yes to more opportunities because it's just going to open up doors. And it doesn't mean say like yes, I'll do that, but be more positive towards the opportunities that come to you. If we had a day where like we got to film like when we filmed the, for the app videos, we knew that was going to be a big day, and you were like, oh, do you want to take a break? Are you doing okay? I was like, no, no, it'll be fine. We'll just, I'll just do it because I knew if I just did it, we just get it done and it'd be great. And we didn't. We smashed it out. It was fine. And I was sore for two days, but it was all good because we were like ahead with the schedule. I think saying yes and just going for things is the instant way of getting yourself in the right place. Cool. When you say yes to things that are particularly hard, and you have said yes to a few things that are very difficult in the last couple of years, you did uh, you went and did a run at the Spartan World Championships with zero training. Want to do it? Yes. You've done a couple of Ninja Warrior shows. You've done all these multiple hours of filming, all this stuff. Do you find that the positive attitude helps you to embrace the suffering that comes from those things yeah because it generally the people around you are affected by it in a positive way and so you're in it together sure i i very very rarely find people are adversely affected by my energy Good. you very rarely get people unless they're truly people that want to suck other people down with them yes and they exist and they definitely exist mm-hmm. but even then for the most part if i'm one among the person i leave that person it's yeah. like your your energy is not worth my time um, I'd say that yeah, it's, it's always been a positive it's affected other people in a positive way and it gets people through that the spine race is a perfect example I do it with people who, that, who halfway through are like I can't do this I cannot do this yeah you can I'm just going to help you just keep doing it. we'll keep walk here and talk with me I'm going to push you up this little bit and we'll, we'll do it together won't name any names Mody. Um <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, it did it, and it got him through a thing that he never thought he could do because he was ready to give up halfway through and my positivity my energy I'd be like, you can do it. You're doing it already. Let's just finish together. Got him through it. Yeah, I guess that's that's what makes a good leader in those situations too. Like, you've always got to be a good leader and a good follower in life. And, and I guess that kind of, that's what a true leader does, right? They embrace the suck more than everybody else. And, yeah. And put one foot in front of the other. As someone that's surrounded by me, <laughs> my energy most time, but that, that sort of person, as you said before, you tend to be on the other scale of things a little bit. How does that affect you and are there times there where, because I'm sure it would frustrate you at times, how do you deal with that? The positivity doesn't frustrate me. Ever. It's hard. You know what it is? And this is, this is maybe way too deep for a podcast and nobody wants to see my internal battles. 
I do. What it does is it's it's when you look into the abyss, the abyss looks into you, right? The, the more you focus on the negative and you and you search for the, the the darker side of human nature, the more it's reflected back onto you, right? Yeah. And it's a little bit of the same thing, but it's like looking into a positivity mirror. It's it it exposes you and sometimes I get angry and frustrated. I don't want to sound like I'm some guru here. It exposes me oftentimes to think if I get frustrated and it's bouncing around, whatever, I'm like, and I feel a bit frustrated by it. It forces me to look at myself and say, well, well why are you frustrated by this? Mm. What are you projecting? And is it that's causing this? Is it, is it that you're, you've turned up to work hard for a leg session and I'm like, oh, I just want to, I just want to, you know, have a, have a lazy soft session. Is that what, and so it often inspires more self-reflection. And sometimes I get frustrated by my own self-reflection and I, I get down on myself. And, you know, that's something that emotionally you have to work through and that I'm working through on my journey. But I think that's why you also see those people who just want to suck you down as well and bring you down because... Is that the way of dealing with it? Yeah, they see their reflection and they go, right, I've got two choices here. I can be within myself or I can try and make this guy feel like me. Yeah. And alternatively to that, that's some days. And some days when you're... It, it does depend. Because the days are also fewer since I recovered from my mental health struggles too. Yeah. I, mean, I think when you're suffering from depression, it's a different story because you physically lack the chemistry to get out of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I guess that's how that's how I would deal with it. But like succumbing to the energy that someone is putting out like that, that, that level of positivity, like you said, it never ends poorly. Yeah. I'm sure there's been workouts where I've turned up and I've like not even spoken for the first 10 minutes. But then by the end of it, you're just like, oh, well, I'm really glad I did that. Yeah, you're never going to be, as I said, negatively outcome. Yeah. So you finish and be happy you did it. I guess it's kind of a double bronze sword. It sometimes makes me reflect myself and why I'm projecting that frustration and, and where that's come from in my life and go and sort that out. Um, and, and other times you just go with the ride. You just like, nothing bad comes of it. I want to also... Uh, have a little addendum here and say my way is not necessarily the same as the right way having the energy i have it's not for everyone i i understand that and hopefully you guys aren't taking that as being like well you need to be more like this hope it's giving you an outcome of like there is a balance there and and probably somewhere in between us is probably the happy meeting but whatever right. your version and that's, that's exactly it it's and whether you take that in if you know you're surrounded by someone that has energy 24 7 and that's not you Taking Lane's advice, taking some that he might be saying there of how you can attach that to you and and how you can uh, like reflect that into your own life. And as Lane was saying, he he uses that time as a self reflection period. And maybe if you're not in that position to do that, you're too affected. Go see someone about it, talk to someone about it, because I think communication at the end is going to be the big thing that's going to totally to help you there. And that's something that in the, for the last year and a half, you and I have excelled in a communication wise of understanding where each other's at. Definitely. And taking the time to understand that. Mm. And it's allowed us to be more positive towards everything we do because of that. Yeah, absolutely. And don't mistake energy for attitude. That's a really good one. They're very different things. You don't have to be upbeat. You can be tired and think, I'm going to get through this because it's cool. Yeah. But you don't have to be on your best every single day. If you've been up to 12 and you get up at 4 to work out, you're an idiot. But <laughs> you don't have to have the energy and be OTT about it. You need to have the attitude, though. Yeah. You need to yeah. keep moving forward, definitely. I think that's the probably the big takeaway here is the as I said, choosing your attitude and choosing what you do there and making the conscious decision to move forward with something is a hard thing to do at times. Particularly for some people. Some people just don't know where to start with that. But I'd say what we talked about before, someone who's setting out to get into that position, have a look at every situation and go is there going to be negatives from saying yes to this? And do they outweigh the positives? And do you think that's why? Because you're quite good at saying no to stuff you don't want to do. I've learned to prioritise uh, what's going to benefit me in a pretty selfish way. Okay. Like going, is this what? Like, the amount of podcasts I get asked to do and, and hey, could you just join this Skype call and hey, can you do a live workout for me in my Patreon? And be like, is it going to be worth my time? Is, am I getting a better place mentally after this? Is it going to help my brand? Is it going to help Milestone? 
what's the benefits of this? Because otherwise, I could put that time and energy into something else that's going to be more productive. And I think that's only come with experience. Yeah, but that is that a is that something you would a skill you would encourage people to practice where they can? Yeah. To just to have a cost benefit analysis of what, yeah, what, yeah, what yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. Learning to prioritize things for your own, but I think also that only comes with experience. Sure. So you have to say yes to things and realize I shouldn't have done that. Sure. And if you don't do that thing, you won't know. People are really worried about taking risks and doing things and probably say no to things they shouldn't because they might realize afterwards, oh, actually, yeah, that was like taxing my body. But as a life experience, that's so worth what I did there. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad I did that. Mm -hmm. I now know that I could do that again or I shouldn't do that again because it's not worth my time. But if you never did it to start with, you're not going to learn anything from it. I think that's a really big thing with life, Mm -hmm. learning from experiences. You you can't, without the sour, the sweet wouldn't be so sweet. So I think that's a definitely something to take away from it as well is with that being focused on your attitude and your energy and saying yes to things, it's going to, either way, you're going to come out ahead because you're either going to win or learn. Yep. Yeah, that, that's fantastic. That's great advice for people. Um, yeah, because I, I often get in situations that I don't want to be in. You know, and stuck in a garage with me. Stuck in a garage with me. No, but it's 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 interesting to be more mindful of the event. Be mindful of it and, and figure out did this actually benefit me, like you said, or, or, or did it not? Yeah. And that's cool. I am a more evolved human being. Yeah. Because of the experience that I just had, whether net positive or net negative, who cares? You also your uni experiences. Oh. Sitting at a computer for eight hours in a day that you feel like you didn't actually get anything out of but you've probably realized throughout that time in like, I now learned that I can focus on not talking during this period and take this person's advice in, or I know from this that there's six hours in there. I don't need to focus my time on because I've already done that little thing there. Yeah. I wasn't on the call, so I can't really be more specific than this, but <laughs> I'm sure there's things there that even if it felt like that was a waste for some periods and it was a lot more effort than it was worth, you probably learned from that. No, I definitely. Other ways. Yeah, def- I definitely did learn from that. And it also really... Uh, tuned up my lie detector uh, on people talking nonsense. So it, it was, it, uh, it definitely wasn't that positive, but at the time it was the worst. <laughs> it was so bad. Don't want to do that again. But again, you've learned from it, so that's yeah. the main thing. No, for sure. I think that might wrap it up. All right. I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed this. Again, if you want to see more videos, I'm obviously going to upload this to YouTube. I think most of our podcasts are fairly unedited, so it's an easy edit for me. Yeah. Um, it's just bleeping a few swear words out. Yeah, and I'll have, I'll have to remember to stop swearing. But we did well here. Yeah, we did. Until next time, stay positive. We love you guys. Mm -hmm. And I'll speak then. Bye.